Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is I want to solve two electrical potential difference problems. I'm going to show you how to use the equation above my head here. It says that the potential difference between two points, I'm choosing A and B here, is equal to minus the integral of the electric field scalar product with uh, the displacement. So I'm gonna show you in the first problem, we're gonna consider this case here that I have illustrated uh, next to me. So I have two charge plates. They both have a positive charge density on those plates, but they have different amount of charge per unit area. My goal is going to be to find the potential difference between points A and B using that equation. All right, uh, in the second place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a chunk of metal here. Uh, the metal has a thickness of uh, two centimeters in my problem. And again, my goal is going to be to evaluate what is the potential difference between points A and B without changing the charge densities on those outer plates. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so this is my expression right here. Uh, again, this is just a definition. So the first thing we have to do here is let's just write out this scalar product. So again, you're integrating from point A to point B. And this here is the magnitude of the electric field. This is the total field between those plates. This is the magnitude of uh, that infinitesimal displacement multiplied by cos of the angle between both of those vectors. That is a definition of a scalar product. Now I'm telling you that point A is at 2 centimeters away from uh, the left plate and point B is at 17 centimeters away from that left plate. Okay, the distance between both of those plates is 20 centimeters. Now let's think about the electric field. So this uh, blue plate over here on the left produces an electric field and within the region that I'm interested in, it produces an electric field like this. I'm going to call it E1. Now how about the orange plate? So the orange plate is also positively charged. Things that are positive produce electric fields that point away from them, okay? So this here is going to be the electric field E2. Now, each one of these, you can calculate its magnitude. For example, if I'm interested in E1, all I have to do is take that charge density and divide it by two times epsilon zero, where epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space. Uh, the magnitude of E2, again, pretty straightforward because all I have to do is just use this 9 microcoulomb per meter squared in order to calculate that magnitude of the vector. We know the direction is in a different direction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a standard coordinate system. I'm going to call this positive x. I'm going to call this positive y. You can see right away that the magnitude of E2 is going to be bigger than the magnitude of E1. So what does that mean? It means that the total field is actually going to be pointing to the left. All right, this is going to be the total field. And this is the total field that gets put into our expression over here. So I need to evaluate what is this total field. All right, so the magnitude of the total field then is simply this. So you choose sigma 1 divided by 2 epsilon 0. That is positive because it is pointing to the right. And minus sigma 2 divided by 2 epsilon 0. All right, so at the end, all you have to do, I'm just going to factor out a 2 epsilon 0, and I'm left with sigma 1 minus sigma 2. Uh, this is the magnitude of E total. I'm going to go actually ahead and calculate what is that number of that total electric field. So I have 1, 2, uh, epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. You look that up, and here I have the charge densities. Right? And again, if I'm taking the difference here, I'm going to have uh, 5 minus uh, 9, right? So this is going to be minus 4, and that's in microcoulomb. So it's times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per meter. At the end, I put that in the calculator, and my total, it's okay. I'm going to get a negative sign. That just tells me the direction of that last field, and I get minus 226,000 volts per meter, okay? So that is the magnitude of the total field for this problem. All right, so now we're going to go back to our expression here. I'm only going to substitute the negative, uh, sorry, th the magnitude for this electric field. I still have to worry now about this angle theta. So what is this? It is the angle between both of those vectors. So think about it. We have E total that is going to the left. And now I have a displacement. I'm going from point A toward point B. So my little vector in the direction of the displacement is pointing in the opposite direction. 
So guess what? We're going to have cos of 180 degrees here, and that is going to cancel out the negative sign in the front. So at the end, this is all it looks like. Um, VB minus VA, this negative in the front cancels with the cos of 180, which is also minus one. And now I'm integrating from A to B. Uh, those are positions. And again, it's just the magnitude of E total. I don't, I drop that negative sign and DX here is going to be a positive value, okay? Um, e total, you can take that out because it is a constant term. So I bring that to the front. And now I'm integrating uh, from A to B. Well, guess what? That is simply the position of point B minus the position of point A. And now we're in a position where you just substitute everything inside. And this is going to be equal to the potential difference between both of those points. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So 226,000. Now convert everything to meters. The position of point XB is 17 centimeters, uh, 0.17 and minus two centimeters. All right, we put that in the calculator and we should get a value that is approximately 33,900 and that is measured in volts. All right, so that's it for the first problem. All right, here's problem two now. Again, now we're inserting this metal block. Now the metal, a couple keys to this here. The metal had no net charge, so it was originally neutral, okay? It has a thickness of two centimeters here, so the left edge is nine centimeters away from the edge. And the right edge, um, again, will be nine centimeters from the other side, right, from the other plate. Uh, one thing to note also, we're gonna wanna calculate what is the induced charge densities here. I'm writing it as sigma L for left and sigma R for right. What are going to be these charges that are going to appear at the surface of the metal in order to satisfy this second condition here, because we always need, if it's a conductor, we need that electric field inside to be equal to zero, okay? All right, so the important thing here was that the piece of metal was electrically neutral, so it had zero net charge, okay? Now, if you think about it, um, there's going to have to be some charge on the left and the right, because the metal is going to have to produce an electric field that cancels out the electric field produced by these external plates. So, and if there's no net charge, it means whatever charge separation you're going to have, you're gonna to have to satisfy this relationship. So whatever you have on the left is going to be equal and opposite to whatever happens on the right. And what that means, guess what? Is that if you have equal and opposite charges on the surface of the metal here, they will not produce a field outside of the piece of metal, okay? So that means we already know the electric field everywhere in space. So we could right away, if we're only interested in the difference in electrical potential between point A and B, we could do this already. So we're just going to apply the same method as before. We have VB minus VA, okay? Now if we think about this integral here, we're going to go from minus, and where are we gonna go? We're gonna go from A all the way to this nine centimeters here, okay? I'm gonna call this XL, and I'm gonna call this XR. So I'm gonna go from A to XL, and guess what? This is going to be E dot DX, the same expression as what we had before, just different uh, bounds on this integral. The next thing we have is, well, minus the integral from XL to XR. Well, guess what? The field is zero there, so this doesn't matter, okay? I can right away, I should be able to just cross that out because I don't have to worry, there's no electric field inside that conductor. That makes it easy. And then minus here, we're gonna go from X, um, on the right all the way to point B. And again, it's the same expression as before, dot dx. So again, you're gonna have the same arguments with the cos of theta here. And since the field is the same, at the end, all we're left with here is an expression like this. It's that magnitude of E total. This is going to be XL minus A. And here we're going to have, uh, again, plus, this is going to be B minus XR. Okay, and we know all of these values. So here you can right away, we could substitute everything here. So we get 226,000 for the magnitude of that field. Uh, XL minus XR, that equals to two centimeters. And then you still have the B minus A, which is, the 20, uh, which is 15 centimeters, right? So let's just substitute everything inside here and you'll see. So this is 0 0.11, uh, 0 0.09 rather. 
uh, minus A was uh, 2 centimeters, 0 0.02, plus B, uh, B was at 17 centimeters, 0 0.17, and then minus XR, which is 11, 0 0.11. Okay, so we put this in the calculator, 226,000. Uh, here, what do we get? Uh, we get uh, 6, and then 6 plus 7 gives me 13. Okay, so we put that in the calculator. Lo and behold, you're going to get a potential difference uh, in this case, which is going to be smaller than the previous case, right? And what I got here was 29,400 volts, okay, for that potential difference between both of those points. All right, maybe just one last follow-up question. The question could be, well, what are these charge densities here at the surface of the conductor? So we know they have to be equal and opposite, but let's just call it sigma. Okay, so I would just kind of drop the subscript here, R and L. We know they're equal and opposite. So I'm just gonna put a negative sign next to that one and just call it sigma. Now we know that a positive charge on the left and a negative charge on the right, this will be the induced electric field here. Right? And E induced has to have this magnitude of 226,000. Well, how would you write E induced as an equation with a charge density? Again, you have the left side that produces a field pointing to the right, and you have this right charge density that also produces an electric field pointing to the right. At the end, when you add both of those together, you get sigma over epsilon zero. There's no extra factor of two there because you've already included both plates. So this here must be equal to the 226,000. Well, remember how we got that. That was sigma one minus sigma two uh, divided by two epsilon zero. And again, just put the uh, absolute magnitude here just to take care of that sign difference here. Uh, so what do we see? Well, the epsilon zeros cancel out. And again, if we're only worried about the magnitude of these charge differences over here, we have 9 microcoulomb per meter squared and 5 microcoulomb. So this difference gives me 4. And 4 divided by 2 gives me 2 microcoulomb per meter squared. This here has to be the charge density here. So on the left-hand side, you're going to have 2 microcoulomb per meter squared. On the right-hand side, you're going to get minus 2 microcoulomb per meter squared. Okay, kind of a nice problem to illustrate how to calculate all these different quantities, but especially being more comfortable uh, using this complicated-looking integral. All right, we'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for watching.